This is Red Green, and today's show, Harold salutes his teachers, Bill gets stuck in the mud, and I'm gonna give you the lowdown on how to fix your lawn chair. And now it's time for the show about the greatest Canadian folk hero since Uncle Joe on Petticoat Junction. <laughs> well, you know, of course he wasn't Canadian, so that's not fair. Of course, the only thing fair about my uncle is his complexion. So here he is, my uncle, Mr. Red Green! Thank you, and uh, please take anything that Harold says with a grain of aspirin. <laughs> and a jar of gravel. <laughs> Things have been kind of slow up at the lodge this week, so I ended up with some time on my hands, and I thought, well, maybe I'll clean out the boathouse or maybe drag some of the old car batteries out of the front hall. <laughs> I decided instead to take a look at this month's mail. Oh, great. Oh, that's a great choice, because maybe my Star Trek stuff came. Did it come, my Star Trek stuff? No, Mr. Spock, it did not. Uh, however, your report card did. No. Well, good. <laughs> you didn't read it by chance, did you, Uncle Ray? Didn't. You know, I thought it was kind of odd that uh, my nephew's report card would come here to Possum Lodge rather than his home, where his parents are. Doesn't that seem unusual to you, Harold? <laughs> huh? No. No. <laughs> Can I have it, please? Can I? Well, we'll talk about it later, I guess. But on a happier note, got this application form from the government where uh, they say that uh, if we get ourselves classified as a recreational uh, tourist attraction, uh, they will give us a grant uh, for upgrading and promotion. Government money? <laughs> You'll lose your independence. <laughs> You're turning your back on the free market capitalist system that we have created for each and every individual in this fine, great, outstanding country of ours, sir! <laughs> it's $50,000, Harold. Well, I'm in there like a dirty yeah. shirt. Don't get me wrong. It's not me. It's, it's the others I'm exactly. thinking about. If they're there, we should be there. Of course, we don't need that much money. Uh, the whole lodge is only worth 20 But I figure, gosh, if I could get even 300 bucks, get myself half a dozen uh, repoed boats, or what have you, I mean, that'd be fine. And then I thought to myself, gee, I'm not sure that, you know, Possum Lodge uh, would qualify. But then, uh, by golly, you know, it would, it would actually make the lodge more Canadian if, if the business was subsidized by the government. You know? <laughs> Don't touch that report card, Harold. No. <laughs> oh, when I was a lad, my dad would take me down to Possum Lake. We'd build a raft out of logs and empties. Then we'd lie in the sun and bake. We'd paddle out a mile or more till the shore was starting to dim. Then good old dad would set the raft on fire, and that's how he taught me how to swim. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to show you some fine furniture restoration that will not only enhance the beauty, but will also add to the value of this beautiful old uh, antique aluminum lawn chair. Now, what happens with these units is, uh, unless you're one of those purists that brings them in for the winter, is that they sit out there in the sun and the sleet and the rain and the hail and the icicles and the tornadoes and the thunderstorms and the monsoons if you live near the coast. And what happens is you get a chemical change in the webbing here where this soft, pliable, plastic, durable stuff turns into kind of a crystallized, uh, crunchy Graham wafer type substance. And the next thing you know, your barbecue guests sit down and uh, <laughs> spill their hot dogs and beer all over their leisure suits. Not to mention the four inch sliver from the deck that goes up through the seat of their pants in search of a new home. <laughs> and before you know it, your uh, dinner party goes from your backyard to a small claims court. Now, <laughs> this might look funny, and it is, but not if it happens to you. But instead of throwing the chair out in the garbage, or, or I should say throwing it in the garage with the idea you're going to fix it someday for nine years and, or ten years or a hundred years, and then throwing it out, I'm going to show you a way to restore this antique beauty back to as good as new. <laughs> oh, boy. Glad I waxed the floor. <laughs> All right. Uh, once you got the straps uh, cut through there, you just got to... Pop those metal clips off the top. <laughs> those things are really on there. Well, now what we have to do 
is uh, put the new webbing on there. And it's expensive stuff, I'll tell you. Fifteen bucks a roll seems a little steep to fix a two-dollar lawn chair, don't you think? <laughs> but uh, luckily, I mean, I may not have money, but I have imagination. First, I'd, I'd rather have money. So I suggest you use something else, uh, like maybe ribbon. Although now the, the sides of that are pretty sharp, you know, you think a paper cut's bad, try sliding your backside over that in your Speedo, and that'll get your attention. <laughs> have your own checkerboard on there. Or you could use uh, a lamp cord. That'll work good. That's not sharp on the edge at all. It comes in the brown, comes in the white. Could be kind of attractive. And, of course, I have a ton of this left over from that electric weaver's loom I made last year. <laughs> uh, or a car seat belt. That would work. Oh, well, you're sitting on them anyway. Might as well make it official. <laughs> or you can even use, I guess, uh, the kids' skipping rope, you know, while they're at school. They, they don't mind you doing stuff like that. <laughs> Whatever it is you use, you want to attach it all on there with the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. Now, you can do it that way, but I got a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Shiny silver frame, shiny silver webbing. Kind of looks like the Lone Ranger's lawn chair, doesn't it? <laughs> and that shiny chrome look just uh, just screams money, as far as I'm concerned. Or maybe it just screams imagination. And she is strong. I'll tell you, your Aunt Orca could sit in this baby. <laughs> Let's try her out. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's solid. That is solid. You got room for me in here and a fully stocked cooler. And you know what you could do is you could, say, uh, make a patio umbrella and a, and a hammock and, and even a garden trellis. Cover them all with the duct tape. You got kind of a coordinated look. <laughs> Can't beat that. But remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh. <laughs> well, now, here's an added bonus. You can use the, the, the chair as a lint remover. <laughs> or a hair remover. <laughs> Forgot about the rip in those pants. <laughs> this is the part of the show that I love because we expose those three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> and here to prove that point once again is my Uncle Red and his best friend in the whole wide world. Today is Mr. Dougie Franklin. Here's the letter. Dear experts, I'm thinking of taking the family on a vacation this winter. Are there any places you would recommend? Well, golly, there are just so many of them, you know, beautiful spots. Uh, Moose Lake, uh, Moose Jaw, uh, Moose Factory is nice. Uh, moose and E this time of year is... Uncle Red, I think the viewer would like uh, less moose and more fun. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. You know, you got your Bahamas. You know, you got the Barbie dose. You got your uh, Bimini Island, your Bikini Atoll, Purdy Viardi, you know. But I would recommend to anybody, if you're looking into a tropical paradigm, remember these three words, folks. Three words. Food, weather, medical care. You can't tell me the best doctors in the world are working that resort circuit. <laughs> well, is there a place that you would recommend, Mr. Franklin? Well, sir, I would think before I'd sign on the dotted line for any one of those tropical tours, I'd take a good hard look at a 65 or a 66 Mustang, Harold. <laughs> Dougie, I don't think that is technically a resort, uh, <laughs> even if you turn the heater up full on that one. Well, that's my point, though, Red. I mean, you know, why blow your brains out on two weeks of sunstroke and diarrhea, you know? <laughs> When, for the same price, you could invest, okay, in a Mint Boss 302 convertible. Instead of fun in the sun, you could have it made in the shade. <laughs> yeah, but I still don't think you could really equate, you know, uh, seeing another country, another culture, even with buying a used car. Hmm. Harold, the amount of money I've spent on my monster truck, I could have been around the world three Maybe four times. And what would I have to show for? <laughs> well, uh, adventure, knowledge, memories. You cannot crush cars with memories. <laughs> Not yet, Earl. It is summer. A shotgun, a big hunting knife, leg hold traps, 
trip wires, pistols. You're armed and you're ready. And God help the neighbor who tries to use your pool. <laughs> I took the application form to Ranger Gord, but he was all excited about something else. Oh, I want to show you something. Come here. Look out there. Notice anything? Forest? <laughs> no. No, the tree, the new little tree. What color is it? It's green. It's a green one. <laughs> Cute, huh? I don't know what I'm going to call him yet. <laughs> oh, no, it's a her. <laughs> 3,100 days, folks. Yep. <laughs> Best attendance record in the province. Mr. Reliable, that's what they call me. <laughs> that's why HQ sent me to this tower. This is the, this is the toughest tower they got. I'm I'm the toughest rage. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Uh, I'll tell you what, Gorn. Gorn, uh, one thing you could help me with here. Uh, I've got this uh, grant application for the government. I, I thought maybe you could point out uh, any problems that you think you might have or whatever. Sure. You know? Sure, I'm okay. good with the clerical side of things, too. So if HQ has a cushy desk job available, I'm ready. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're trying to upgrade uh, Possum Lodge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you'll be fine as long as you don't have any pollution problems, yeah? It says you'll have to clean up any environmental infractions. Oh, yeah, all right, we can do that. We, you know, we've got the septic system now. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you're going to have to hook it up, huh? <laughs> all right. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Gordon. That was terrific. Thanks. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. I got to No, please, look. I made a huge salad. <laughs> well, we're getting there with the cleanup. Snicky Peterson says that he can find the lid to the septic tank. Uh, because he knows what part of the lake it dropped into when it blew off during Mexican night. <laughs> and now Buster Hadfield's out with a snow shovel, uh, skimming the scum off of Possum Bay. And uh, Moose Thompson is converting the barbecue to run on propane instead of old furniture. <laughs> That's wonderful, Uncle Red, but, you know, all this cleanup and conversion, it costs money, and who's going to pay for that? Well, the lodge is, Harold, out of the grant money. Oh, okay, yeah, that's all well and good, but what if it doesn't add up, right? What if all the expenses, once subtracted from the grant, actually equal a debit, which is oftentimes, uh, you know, created and symbolized by that of a negative integer? <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting concept from a guy who got 43 in math. <laughs> on private property. You shouldn't even be looking or nothing at it. Well, I'm... I don't think Harold has the strength or coordination to take this off me, if his gym mark is any indication. <laughs> oh, there once was a guy from the city named Dave who came up here to camp. Well, Dave never wore pajamas. And he said that was really camp. <laughs> when it came time to go to bed, we heard a horrible yip, yip. <laughs> While zipping up his bedroll, Dave had made a painful slip. Well, we all had a real good laugh, with the exception of Dave, <laughs> who now wears pajamas to cover a scar that looks like a little wee windbreaker, which is what it is. <laughs> it's time now for Never Lend Your Van to an Idiot, or as we call it, Adventures with Bill. <laughs> Bill had borrowed the van, yeah, 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 oh, we know Bill, and he got her deep into a, into a bottle there full of wet mud and goo, so he wants me to push and he's gonna... I'm not sure if I should have done this. Maybe I should... And yeah, he gets her, just guns it. You know, thank you, thank you, Bill. I'm so right through to as far as you can go with a permit. And, uh, thank you, Bill. Bill, that's enough. <laughs> now, maybe, uh, yeah, good plan. I'll do the driving. Bill's gonna take the... Uh, these are, I think they're like potato bags, burlap or something. One behind, I don't know why I put one in front. I'm going to go forward, aren't I? Oh, well, anyway, it's his idea. Now I'm going to spin the wheels. Away we go, and, and it just took off. Oh, 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 golly. Stephen King lives. And now he's going to try something else. He's got a, a little bit of straw there uh, on a shovel, and 
he wants me to get the wheels turned and he's gonna put the straw in there and that's gonna you know the, I guess the, the wheel's gonna bite on the straw but actually it, it kind of bit on the shovel oh boy wow <laughs> holy smoke that could be a new Olympic event eh, Bill? and now another stroke of brilliance he's gonna rock the van he'll push I go forward and then he pulls back and I pull man and we're hey, you can feel it we're getting somewhere yeah yeah she's coming she's coming oh oh, oh. Well, I can get longer stuff in the van now. <laughs> and now for all you young kids who don't mind wasting time, here's Harold. <laughs> get ready, because here's the part of the show for anyone who's in school. Oh, wait a sec. I don't, you know, I don't mean anyone who's in school like right now. Because if you're in school right now, how are you watching the show? <laughs> gotcha. Hey, okay, so what should we call this? Anyone like who attends school? Alrighty, that's right. Okay, anyway, this week's segment is called. Teachers are people too. <laughs> cool, huh? Okay, see the way I made like the Roman numeral two? Trey, cool. Almost a metaphor. Creates the, the suggestion of a sequel, implying previous success. <laughs> Always thinking. <laughs> okay, all right, the bottom line is respect. Okay, and respect, my friendlies, is a two-way street, all right? You have to respect the teacher, and the teacher has to respect you. Only, you know, you gotta go first. And the best way I found to earn their respect is once a month, you wash, wax, and vacuum their car. <laughs> now, this creates a spirit of cooperation. Yes, although it may not necessarily increase your marks any, but, you know, okay, say like in math, you got like, ah, uh, 43. Okay, and you just need those nine more marks to get that 55. Oh, you know, so you're begging and you're pleading and everything. And the teacher says, well, I'll get back to you, won't I? Right there, you see, that's better than a flat no like last time. <laughs> you know, you may have to wait a while, you know, like um, up to a month, say, you know, just for some kind of iota of an idea that they're gonna get back to you, you know, just say. Harold, yep. your math teacher's on the phone. Oh, oh, this is so cool, because I only need nine more math marks. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> more nine more feet of cable. <laughs> I know you teenagers are mainly interested in one thing, sex and violence. So I, I think what the school should do is kind of stress the, uh, say, the sex part of something like, uh, something like Shakespeare. You know, you got, you got Hamlet there, he's always talking about his bear bodkin, and he says Ophelia right to his girlfriend. <laughs> and how perverted would you have to be to be called King Lear? What about Othello? You got interracial sex and murder and suicide. And if you're really into the kinky stuff, you got the two gentlemen of Verona, and as you like it. So I suggest your teenagers drop the rap music and the Madonna videos and uh, take a look at this Shakespeare stuff. Just don't tell your parents. <laughs> ah, you take this letter into town and mail for me? It's important. Can't do it, Red. Can't accept bonded materials. I made a promise to the witness reallocation people. But if you like, I'll take you to town. You can mail it. All right, let's go. If you're really in a hurry, I can start her up without turning on the blower. That'll get you moving in a real big hurry. Well, I can't guarantee you'll be heading towards town. No, no, no. We'll do the blower thing and I'll untie her. No, 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 wait, wait. Hang on. It's only room for one captain on any ship, Red. I learned that on the Bismarck. <laughs> All right. Standing by a cast off, Captain. Aren't you gonna ask me about the Bismarck? Not until after we get back. <laughs> cast off? What is it we're mailing today? An application form for a government grant for the lodge. Well, why didn't you tell me? My connections go all the way up, including Reagan. Oh, <laughs> well, Reagan's not president anymore, Hal. Huh? No, you just don't get it, do you, Red? They want you to believe he's not president, but I think I would know. <laughs> well, it wouldn't matter anyway, because this application is for the Canadian government. Boy, are you naive. Just get me to the post office, would you please, huh? It's a tough old job being president. All those press conferences and the summit talks and the assassinations. <laughs> I just found it real hard to relax when I was in office. You were president, huh? Oh, just a couple of weeks. Subbed in for Nixon so he could take the family to a club med. <laughs> All right, Hap, that's close enough. I think I can swim from here. <laughs> Well, by golly, you're not going to believe this, but uh, we got our government checked by return mail. 
They must be more disorganized than ever down there. <laughs> this is excellent. That means we're going to be stinking rich. Are we going to be stinking rich, Uncle Red? <laughs> well, I don't know, Harold. I haven't opened it yet. Figured I'd save that for tonight's meeting. Wow. <laughs> this is exciting. This is history in the making. <laughs> Well, let's just see if you're an authority on history. <laughs> 38. <laughs> no, I don't believe that qualifies. Well, everything is relative, isn't it, Uncle Red? 38, of course, wouldn't be bad, considering some people got... <laughs> 12. <laughs> <laughs> Little trouble in school there with her, Uncle Red? Where'd you get that, Harold? Grandma Green. She's got a whole stack of these. She's saving them up for the Guinness people. <laughs> I never met anybody who failed art class before. Oh, I gotta go. Oh, 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 look at this. It's got your real name right at the top, right there. Oh, well, I can see why you want to be called Red. That's way more better than this one. <laughs> Explains the teacher's comments, though, why you got in so many fights. Oh, this is going to be great at the possum meeting tonight. The guys are going to love to find out that Red Green's true name is... Harold, Harold. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps we could work out some kind of trade. <laughs> oh, it's a cry of the possum. i got to get down there. Hurry up, Uncle Red, and don't forget to check, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, Harold. Well, uh, it's exciting. That's kind of our, uh, kind of our show for this time. So, uh, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming home uh, straight after the meeting, and uh, I'll be bringing a big wad of cash. So, what do you say we go nuts, rent a movie, and order in a pizza, maybe even tip the guy? <laughs> Wealth means nothing without style. <laughs> and uh, for the rest of you, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, thanks for watching and keep your stick on the ice.